evolution will occur in two layers and although people tend to separate them the first thing I want you to understand is these two things are basically two parts of the same whole there is no difference between micro and macro evolution really at the DNA level it's all the same it's all mutations leading to changes in the DNA code selected for by environmental pressure which we call natural selection or by random events which we call genetic drift there's also gene flow when genes from one population move into the other one regardless of where you look at these all of these changes when accumulated at large levels will cause macro evolution so it's all the same thing but it's important to distinguish between them because a lot of people are willing to accept microevolution but not macroevolution which is what we have to talk about in this lecture series microevolution occurs at the organism level or at the population level what happens here is that changes will occur in the genome because of somatic mutations or mutations that occur at the reproductive events or at the time that the genes are being passed on from generation to generation these genetic changes or mutations will cause changes in the phenotype sometimes now majority of the time those changes will be neutral and random, random because of selection will not have any uh, event on them because they're not going to be uh, causing advantages or disadvantages and a lot of times they will actually be silent and they will not actually change the, gene, the phenotype at all and when they do change the phenotype the majority of the times they'll be deleterious but if there's enough trials it is possible that some of those changes will be beneficial and those changes will cause advantages for the animal which over time could take hold of the population I encourage you to watch the how evolution works simulation video to understand this a little bit better either way and organisms will also develop as they grow over the population because they will respond to the environment and also kinds of other advanced genetic relationships which we already discussed will change the expression of the phenotype based on that genotype but when these differences arise in a population processes such as selection will actually change this population now and we also talked about gene flow and genetic drift and other things like that so migration selection and random events will all cause organisms to become more common than others so this will be happening at the interaction level between organisms either way all of this is microevolution which we already talked about in the previous lecture series now remember throughout this process animals will constantly be exposed to external factors such as the climate geology and ecology of the environment which will change the population uh, and put pressure on the population to change over time now if there's enough separation between two populations of the same kind and they are going to be exposed to differences over time and can independently evolve and that means have independent mutations and have independent uh, migration and genetic drift and genetic uh, flow events it is possible to ch make changes occur at above the species level this is called vicariance and it's what we have to talk about today it's the idea of speciation or the arising of new species now these new species will occur when enough of the microevolutionary steps have occurred to create two different species which can no longer interbreed with each other now isolation is going to be very important for this and we'll talk about that in a little bit and this, but as these species progress throughout time they will then be experiencing different historical and developmental constraints which might make one of them live while the other one does it and that will, will lead to what we call species selection which is over time some species will make it and some spe other species will not and that will cause changes within and between species across time and a process that will take a very very, very long time but ultimately will lead to variety across time on earth which we'll talk we talked about when we did the evolutionary lecture series so microevolution creates variation within and between populations but only at the level of interaction between organisms or at the organism level remember of course organisms do not evolve populations evolve so microevolution can lead to changes within and between populations but macroevolution is when enough of these changes accumulate so that a new species is created and a process that we call speciation or adaptive radiation 
or the splitting of life from one species into many species. And across the story of the earth, these species will be selected against, so some will go extinct, others will, will branch out even more, and over time they will lead to a process called speciation selection. And throughout the entire process, it was the climate, the geology, the ecology, the biology of the environment that actually led to these changes to be selected for or against. And so it's all one big process. So let's see if you can understand the difference between micro and macro evolution. Which one of these explains variety that is microevolution and which one of these explains variety which is macroevolution? Think about it for a little bit. But if you but if you said that this corn up here was an example of macroevolution because enough change occurred, well, that's actually microevolution. It's microevolution because all of these examples could actually interbreed. So they're all part of the same population, which is changing over time, but it's all corn. All right? What about these eye colors? Certainly, that would be macroevolution. They're so different from each other. As we know, these are all eye colors of the human species. And all of these people can also interbreed. So again, it's an example of microevolution. What about this mosquito? Certainly, they look very similar to each other. They couldn't possibly be macroevolution. That is an example of macroevolution because these are two different species of mosquito which cannot interbreed with each other. What about the dogs? Clearly, it must be macroevolution since they look so different from each other. No, that is still microevolution since all of these dogs can still have children with each other. What about these flowers? They look so similar. Certainly they can interbreed and they're going to be macroevolution. No, these two flowers constitute two different species of orchids which cannot interbreed and constitute an example of macroevolution. So I put this slide in here to make sure you understand that there is not enough difference in the way it looks when you look at micro versus macroevolution. Microevolution is in changes which will be as small as they could be that will lead to differences within the populations which will make them impossible for to reproduce, like the flower example you see over there or the mosquito example. Microevolution are evolution, no matter how big, which are going to be within the same species, or you know, the members of the population can still interbreed and can still consider members of the same species. Now, although it's possible for one single change in the gene to cause the species to become unable to cross with another population of the same, that used to be the same kind, one mutation might be enough to be called macroevolution. Typically, it is when several mutations accumulate over a long period of time that you get to what is called macroevolution. Either way, it is not a difference in how much changes. It is a difference in a substantial change which causes impossibility of reproduction. And that's the difference between micro and macro evolution. You want to make sure that you have that clear before you proceed. Either way, they're both parts of the same process. Micro evolution explains why populations change over time. Like the American population has changed over time because of selection. Mm -hmm migration, which is gene flow, random events such as genetic drift, bottleneck effect, founder effect, all of these things explain why the American population has changed over time. We talked about this on the uh, microevolution lecture series. We also talked about the fact then, for this lecture series, of speciation. Now speciation is changes that will occur from one species to the next over many, many years. Now, lots of things are going to be important to, to lead to the speciation, and many of these things we already talked about. We talked about natural selection, and that's definitely going to be important into creating speciation. We also talked about genetic drift, which is a random events like the bottleneck and father effects. We also talked about mutations, which will change the genetic code, and recombination, which is sexual selection. When we did cell biology and cell division, we also talked about polyploidy which is basically when an organism has, has multiple copies of all kinds of chromosomes in the karyotype. And there's also some new key terms here. Geographical isolation, reproductive isolation, and hybridization. Now, these represent some of the many types of isolation that we will talk about that will actually lead to speciation. And hybridization is the process of combining two species to form a new one. 
regardless of what processes are involved in this, all of these things combined will lead to speciation. And we'll be talking about each of these things in this lecture series. But basically, speciation is when within a population, a separation occurs and then divergent evolution occurs and two new species will, will, will actually uh, split from one. And let's talk about how this process actually takes place and how changes in a species can cause splitting of a species over long periods of time and lead to the great variety that exists in life on Earth. See you then.